Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Now, if you've never done anything with Vue.js before, I recommend watching my previous video. Or don't, I'm not your dad. You can do whatever you want. But today we're gonna to be talking about, probably in my opinion, the most important thing with Vue.js, and that is computed properties. So typically your app is gonna retrieve some data from the server, and uh, such as, you know, here we can simulate a bare database here. And that data is going to have uh, a particular shape that we may not have too much control over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simulate this uh, bare database being passed to our app uh, as a property here. So let's say props. And we'll call this bare DB. Looks like it says beard B, but it actually is bare DB. So now in our app, we can access that property here by saying props bare DB. And we can now um, access this uh, bare DB uh, property that's simulating some data coming from our server. So this data is an object here, and you can see that it's the IDs of uh, this object are the IDs of the bear, and which contain uh, some information about each of the bears here. But Vue.js is pretty cool about uh, handling um, objects and looping through objects. Um, we don't need to do anything special to do that. We can use the same V4, um, and loop through uh, each of these bears. So we can say v4 bear uh, in bear db that we've passed in, and it will happily loop through that object and let us print out these uh, bear names. So we go here and refresh the page, and we can see that we get all of our bear names printed. Also, a quick side note, uh, whenever using v4 in a loop here, you should probably provide it a key property here um, and now normally by default, Vue.js has a pretty efficient way of tracking elements when it's in a loop, but there are some cases where it doesn't. And so it's by good practice, if you have a unique ID uh, for uh, available here to provide that unique ID. Now we have that unique ID available here as the, the key of our object that we're looping through. And so if we wanna get that key, we simply provide a second argument here. So let's say bear uh, with the key. And then now this key is not only available here if we wanted to print out the, the ID of our, our bear here, but now we can use that key here uh, to give it to Vue.js just to make sure that it has a unique ID when it's uh, creating a loop of elements. Moving on, you'll notice that our uh, list here is not in alphabetical order. Now we can't really necessarily go back to our, um, our server and reorder these things. And because it's an object, the order is not guaranteed. What we really need to do is we need to convert our bear DB into an array that we can sort. And so to do that, we're going to use a computed property. So we're going to add a computed uh, object here that's going to hold all our computed properties. And we're going to name the computed properties uh, bear, plural, bears. And so in here, we're going to do is we're going to get a result and we're going to go through the keys of our bear db uh, thing passed in from the database here. And then we're gonna map through those keys and each of those will be the, the keys or the IDs provided to us. And from here, we can get each bear off of this bear db. So let's say bear db ID and get each bear. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that ID as a property of bear. So each element in the array has an ID available for it since we're losing it now uh, that we no longer have it available here. Um, and so we'll just say bear ID equals ID and return in our map the bear like so. So now we have a, uh, we, we turned our object of bears into an array of bears with the ID property available. So now we can sort it. So we'll say resort or result dot sort and we'll have a B to compare against each other. And what we want to do is we want to sort by the name property. So we can say name uh, dot locale compare to compare it to another property. And we'll compare it to the name of B. And this will return uh, either a negative one, a zero, or a one, depending on to sort our array. And so finally, all we have to do is return our result here, if I can spell it correctly. Great, so now we have a computer property named bears. Now, before we update our template, let's just do a console log and do a hello, just to know whenever this uh, bears computer property function, uh, when, it, when it computes, when we wanna know, let, let us know when it computes. And so I'm gonna go here to our template or our page and refresh the page, and you notice that we don't get any hello message logged out. 
And that's because we don't actually use this computer property uh, in our templates, so it never needs to compute the property. Efficient. So now let's update our uh, template here to use this computer property rather than the one passed in from our database here. So we'll just say bears instead of bear DB. And then now this key will be the index in our array, which we no longer care about because we actually have the bear ID. And so we can update this to use that bear ID instead. So now when we go to our page and refresh it, you see we get a alphabetical list as well as our little hello message there because our computer property did in fact compute. So now let's pretend this computer property gets used everywhere and our list of bears is ginormous. And so let's just, uh, I don't know, copy this and nest it within itself just to print out a ton of bears. And we refresh the page and you can see we just get this long list of ton of bears. It's, it's awful. But you'll notice that we only get the hello message once. And that's because Vue.js will cache computer properties even more efficient. Anyways, let's get rid of that nonsense. And now what we want to do is we want to be able to flip the order of our uh, alphabetical list because maybe we want it to go the other way. And so to do that, we're going to add our own data uh, here with this data hook. And we're going to return some data that makes that uh, some properties available to our template here. Uh, and so the property we're going to be using is one called sort. And so then what we can do is go up here to our template. Uh, let's add it here. And we're going to add a button that when clicked, it's going to call this flip sort method. And we could just call this button flip sort. That's a pretty good name. And then let's go down here and implement this flip sort method. So we'll say methods flip sort. And what we're going to do is just basically toggle our sort property here. Uh, so right now it starts, it defaults to one. And so what we're just going to say is, okay, if the sort, uh, if this sort equals one, then we're going to have it equal negative one. Otherwise, if it already equals negative one, then we're going to toggle it back to one. Cool. So now if we want to flip the uh, order of our computer property bears list here, we simply just multiply it by this sort property here available. And so now when we refresh the page, we can now flip the order of our uh, sort here uh, by simply clicking this button. But have you noticed here down in our console, we get a hello for every single time we flip. So it's recomputing our property every single time we change the sort property. So you might be wondering, how does it know when to recompute this bears property? And there are certain properties in Vue.js that are called reactive, or in other words, when a property is modified, other properties or views are going to react to it and update. So in our example here, we have two reactive properties within our bears computer property. We have this bear DB and this sort uh, property. Those are both reactive properties. Now Vue.js is only aware of these because one, we've passed in our bear DB as a property, and the other one we have declared sort as a property in our data hook. And so Vue.js is gonna go through and set up the appropriate stuff and the appropriate things to react to changes to these properties. But reactive properties are not magic. There are circumstances you should be aware of. So let's add a button here uh, for adding a bear to our, um, our bear DB. So we'll say button. And when it's clicked, it's gonna call this method called new bear. And we'll say new bear on our button. And let's go ahead and create this method here. So we'll say method new bear. Great. So now what we want to do is, we, if you remember, our bear DB is an object with IDs. And so what we want to do is we want to add a new bear to this bear DB. And so one would just naturally think that you're just going to add a new bear. So we're going to give it this new ID here and adding this new property to it. And we're going to name this bear Steve. That's a good name. So anyways, we're going to save this, refresh our page, and click new bear. And as you see, our UI does not update our nothing, nothing updates. We don't get that new bear in. Um, also, the same thing happens when we try to delete. So say we're trying to delete a bear off of it, uh, maybe this bear1 um, property. So 
basically because of limitations in JavaScript, uh, Vue.js doesn't really know when properties are added or removed to an object. So us adding or removing um, properties to our bare DB object here is not going to work. Now, but our bare DB property here is reactive itself. So if we assign it to a new, uh, something new, a new object, it will react. So we'll say bare DB. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use object assign to create a new object and default it to the old bare DB object and include our new bear, um, our new ID here. So this will be our new bear name, Steve, that we're gonna add to our object. So this will work. So if we click new bear, you can see that we get this new bear added, but you'll notice that we do get this nasty warning here uh, in um, our console. And the reasoning is, right now what we're doing is we have um, this property passed into our component. And then down here in this method, what we're doing is we're now assigning this property to an entirely new object just to add our bear, our new bear to it. But the problem is, is that maybe sometime next, this, uh, this top level thing gets updated and it updates our property here and sets it down. It's gonna totally uh, nuke out this property, this, this, this object that we've set here and, and our new bear named Steve. It's, it's gonna kill Steve. We, we can't have it kill Steve the bear. Um, so this method is, is not so great. Now, typically we would never do this. Uh, rather, what we would do is do some kind of thing where we admit to the parents uh, to add the bear, right? And so when we admit to the parents to add this bear, the, the parent can do whatever it needs to do and, and add it to the server and all that kind of stuff. And then it's gonna update this bear DB thing and then which is gonna update our list and then finally come down here and update our computer property. Uh, so usually, most of the time, we don't need to, uh, to, to do these, this kind of weirdness. Um, but let's pretend, let's pretend that um, we want this component to kind of take that bear DB and bring it in and take control of it and make it its own. And so it can add um, bears to this object here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the data here and we're going to create another property called raw bears because we want to take control over it. Now you notice that this data hook is a function itself and we can access this on this function to get that property. So what we're going to do is we're going to default uh, our raw bears uh, um, property here to our bear DB. Then the next thing, instead of pointing our computer property here to our bear DB, instead we're going to point it to our raw bears property. And then update this call right here as well. So now we can go down to where we want to try to add a bear. And when we're going to replace this entire uh, array here, instead of replacing one passed into us, instead what we can do is replace the one that we now have control over. So now when we go to our page here and hit new bear, we can see we get the new bear and we don't get the nasty warning because we're just editing our own property. But we're only adding one property to this object and using object assign to create this new thing is kind of overkill. I mean, what we really want to do is do this, where we say this raw bears, and we just want to add our new bear uh, equal to Steve here. So we'll say name Steve. This is what we really want to do. But as I, as I said before, we cannot add properties uh, you know, Vue.js is not going to react to those, but they do have syntax uh, if you want to add a property to an object and trigger the reactivity. So instead, what we can do is we can call uh, this dot set with a dollar sign, um, and then we specify the uh, the object that we want it to apply to, as, as such new bear or raw bears here, and then we want to specify the um, the property we want to add to it. And then the property value that we're going to add is going to be this object uh, named Steve here. So with this syntax, we can add this new ID property to our raw bears. Uh, and this will actually fire all the bindings uh, to add the bear as well. Now, there are two other things about computer properties that I rarely, if ever, use. And I sort of consider them an anti-pattern. But doing a video on computer properties uh, probably wouldn't be complete unless I talked about them. So feel free to stop watching the video right now. So let's say for some reason you want to know when someone has set one of your computer properties. Uh, so we're going to hijack this new bear function. Um, and so let's let's say somebody does this. They, they try to set your computer property uh, to some weird string value and you want to handle that uh, for some reason. 
Um, what you can do is up here in your computer property, you can create and turn this into an object. And by default, uh, you can pass this get function. And so by, by default, what's going to do is just going to, the, the getter is going to return this result and do the good computer property stuff. But you can also now specify a set function. And that set function is going to get called whenever your computer property is set. So with this, say somebody is trying to set your computer property bears to this weird string. For some reason, uh, what we can do now is say this set uh, this raw bears here. Uh, and we can use, I don't know, we, we would use some kind of thing to automatically determine the, the ID of this new bear here. And now we can use that new value as the name. So we say new value equals name. And so now when we hit new bear, it, it will add the bear through this really weird thing. But anyways, I try to avoid setters because I, I really try to only manipulate data within a method or an event. Data usually gets m manipulated in like a whole ton of different ways uh, before being set. So trying to handle all those ways in a single uh, setter here, it, it's just gonna make things get really messy. So the other thing I never use is watchers. So we're gonna add a property here called watch and we are gonna specify the properties that we want to watch. So we wanna watch our bears computed property here. So we're gonna say watch bears. And whenever our bears uh, computed property changes, and you, you can watch really any property, um, we can watch sort or you can watch the bears DB uh, when that gets updated um, as well. But we're just gonna watch the bears here. And so this will give us the, the new and the old value of that, that property here. So now this may sound super useful, right? But ultimately what you end up doing is you start setting properties within your watchers. And then you begin to run into all kinds of timing issues because now you got all these watchers that are changing things whenever they want. And so you start adding debounces and next ticks and your whole app becomes this big timing mess. So really you should just use computer properties. Uh, they update in a very predictable way and you can just handle about 99% of all the use cases that watchers exist for. So, you know, just use computer properties and only use watch if you absolutely, absolutely have to. So anyways, I hope this has helped you learn more about computer properties with Vue.js and it has then help others by sharing the video. And if you want to see more videos, then subscribe, but I'm sure you already are subscribed. So thanks again for watching.